Hi everyone, it's James here from McDSP and you find me today in the heart of the Cube Studios in West London with mastering engineer and mix engineer Manon Grandjean. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> We're here Hi. to talk about all things APB. You're fairly new to the APB party, aren't you? But you've, yes. you've done that scary thing and got one, or oh, now two. Two, yeah. Very, very cool. So we're going to talk about stuff that Manon loves about APB, the plugins she's using, how she's using them. Are they plugins or are they, I don't really know technically <laughs> what to call them. The, the thing I love about it, it's, a, it's hybrid. So it acts like a plugin and it has all the advantages of the, the plugin. So controllable on your door and instant recall, but then it doesn't sound like plugins. It sounds like analog. It sounds like hmm. real gear. Real, real toys. Yeah. So let's dive into your session. Um, tell us a bit about the artist and the track and how you came to work with them and stuff. So the track I've chosen to play today is called Latest Ghost. Um, it's by an artist called uh, Lauren Aquilina. And she's a singer songwriter and I've, I've mixed um, her EP that came out and that song was on it. I mixed it and actually and mastered it. Um, and we actually have the same manager. So that's how we uh, sort of linked up. And yeah, I really love what she's doing. And so I thought that would be a great, great way to demonstrate the APB. Let's do it. <laughs> so the first plugin that I really love is the L18 limiter. You can limit a lot without sounding it squashed, basically, mm -hmm. a lot more than you, you would with um, normal plugins. But I use it mainly, well, I use a bit of, I use it in there with a bit of limiting because I had like three, about three dB of gain. So it's, you can see it's limiting a little in the chorus. You can see that. So just a, a little, like maybe one and a half, two dBs um, of gain reduction. But what I love about it is with a qu quick release and soft knee, um, so it's not squashing the transients or, you mm. know, because I, I, I still like to keep things, especially on this track, quite airy. Mm -hmm. um, so so You're controlling the dynamic, and st but yet still keeping yes. it. And yeah, and still, I don't, I don't want it to sound squashed or, or really compressed. Um, but the great thing about it is the, this color function that can, you can adjust the, the, the sort of the brightness of, of your mix or your master. And you can add a lot of it and it still sounds really nice. Mm -hmm. And it's really, you have to be careful because you get addicted to it a bit. So, <laughs> so it's like, oh, that's, you know, like if you sprinkle sugar on something and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, well, I'm, I'm going to put a bit more of that, a bit more, a bit more. And then I think after a while, it's a bit, a bit too bright. But Overcooked, over, quite literally. Yeah, <laughs> literally. But so we can, we can hear what that does. Um, by sort of bypassing it and then we can bypass the the whole unit as well to see what difference it makes on on my mix bus and if if I would have sent it to uh, a, a diff uh, another mastering engineer I would leave that on because I, I even though it's a limiter this is part of the mix sound yeah. you've mixed into it yes. rather than applied it yeah as a as a, a loudness yeah, or, a, yeah. or a, a, mount, uh, a mastering tool so I, I really love the sound that it brings and it just lifts the vocal slightly as well um somehow so it, it just magic fairy dust yeah so it's like that that stays up uh, maybe i would put the gain down to maybe one db so it's to leave a bit more headroom but i would leave I definitely would leave the collar on and, and and leave that printed definitely if I send it to to get so it mastered. Let's, let's hear it. So I'll play a chorus. I think it's a bit more significant on that. You didn't wanna know me anymore and I got questions. Yeah, I loved and lost before, but I never learned my lesson. Cause I hold on to the past. Like it's a fucking prize. Possession this you the most. But you're just the last.
So we can, I think it's it's already a mix quite bright. So it's already, the, the overall is quite bright. So I wouldn't push it too much um, further than that. But we can have a, a quick a quick play with the color to see like how much you can add and also take take out as well mm -hmm. if you if you wanted to so that's a great i think for mastering that's a great great thing if you if you have it over a few songs and just to really sort of blend you know what mastering engine you do on an album for example really even now you know maybe songs that have been mixed by different mixers and mm -hmm. have different brightness and everything and i think that's a great instead of just eqing it i think that that really Co stuff together yeah co makes it makes co co cohesive makes the individual tracks a cohesive album sort exactly of. yeah so I'll, I'll just put a bit more of it and a bit less as well so we can hear that what that does Handy if they wanted to go a bit more indie and a bit less pop. I think it's it's mixed quite in the in the pop way, so mm -hmm. it's quite bright. But if they wanted to be more indie, then I would do that. I would just put the color down a little bit. And um, so I've, I've, I I really love this, and I use it now all the time on all my master bus. It's it's almost like it's bringing the vocal forward without mm -hmm. it bringing it up in volume. Obviously, there is a gain boost, so there is a little yes, bit of a yeah, lift, of course, but. Yeah, yeah. It's not just doing that. It's bringing the vocal forward, and it's doing even though I'm not in the prime sweet spot for the stereo image. Sure, it is doing a thing to the stereo picture as well, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, oh, definitely. I think because I actually did um, ABs with the the this on and and like printed a mix and then so with on but no, I think I maybe had only one one dB of of gain and a bit of a bit of color printed that and then. Took it out and compensated on my next limiter, um, which is the vice. I've added one to sort of ha mm -hmm. to have them at the same level, and it de I could definitely hear yeah. what that would what that was doing. And like you said, it's, it would just bring it just lifts the the vocal somehow um, and give it a bit, a bit more space. And that's one of my secrets. APB magic. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um, speaking of the lead vocal, let's take a look at the lead vocal. Yes. What you're doing there? Okay. I've got two two channels of um, of lead, so one verse and one for the choruses. Mm -hmm. Are you actively treating the, the verse and chorus differently, or is it or is it subtle? In this case, it was just for. I think I did treat them differently. So my usual process, just just quickly, to, so so that makes sense, is that I, I did print them out first mm -hmm. to what's over there. <laughs> so um so so I would have the so I did EQ them a little bit first and then EQ them slightly when I printed them through my UTA EQ and mm -hmm. the tube tech. So um although they look the, they look the same on the chain that's on there but they were printed slightly differently. Right. Um but then what I'd like to do is when when they printed back in the box is to add a little bit more of something on it mm -hmm. because you know you can. So why Absolutely, not? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so why not? Um, so I, what I love to use is the, the Moo Tube compressor. And that would be pretty much what I would have on those channels, just a bit of de-essing. And the, really, you're going to see it's very light compression. It's not, it's not smashing it because, remember, it's already been compressed mm -hmm. once. And that's also going into a lead vocal bus, which is going to have further... So small amount of compression. multiple stages of compression to yeah. achieve a, a, a broader compression. Yes. So what what total could be five or six dB give um, or take, or rather than smashing it in one hit? Well, yeah. I mean, because it, it's hard because every time every time it's getting compressed, the the vocal are sort of leveled out, and I also do clip gaining mm. and automation as well. So so it's hard to sort of quantify how much is getting compressed in the end, but. Yeah, I would probably about about I, I would go maybe about one or two dB on the tube tech, and then on there as well. It would be it would be again between zero and three gain gain reduction. Um, 
yeah, so not, you know, uh, so like, I, I think that's not exactly, massively. So that's my approach to to compression. Yeah. Lots of little stages yeah. rather than just go slam. Yeah. Because that way you get the effect that you want without the artifacts, without the yeah, nastiness. Exactly. And I think it's it's been a bit of a new sort of thing. And I think people are I'm doing that with limiters as well. And I think at, at mastering people are starting to do that as well instead of limiting a mix at minus six or eight sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, they should they they doing you know stage limiting so they're limiting a little bit with maybe three different limiters, and you also get different colors because they're all different compressors as well. So um, let's listen to what that's doing on um, the lead the lead vocal. So you see on there, it's it's really a it's slow attack and and sort of fast release. Mm -hmm. So it's really gently, um, like sort of one and a half two dB of gain reduction on both. It's just to bring a bit of color and just a, a, a gentle uh, leveling. Is nothing, nothing too crazy. Another sort of secret secret <laughs> weapon, um, which I I tend to use on a lot of my buses is the uh, Mu X channel. Mm -hmm. So this is actually the the first when when I got the APB. This was the f the first one that I got into because I was really intrigued by it because I'd never really well you can see ch channel strips on you know plugins, but I was really interested to that because obviously the 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 El Mu and stuff it's compressors you know roughly what you're going to expect or a limiter you, you mm. know what to expect roughly but i was like oh this is really cool there's a there's a bit of an eq section which is quite simple which i like i don't <laughs> yeah, I, i'm with you, know, you i'm with you simple is the way forward <laughs> i um when when i used to work in in an in the studio in in london in richmond they used to have a, an old tg desk and the eq section was so simple it was plus six or minus six and then you choose your frequency and then mm -hmm. that was like this is like this is great and that's that's kind of reminded me of of that a little because you you've got your choice of frequency there and, and just and, and gain you know and what i found on that eq is that the the top end which i'm usually using either 16k or 10k mm -hmm. Um, it's just so sweet and that's something that you that air that you it's hard to get with plugins yep. um something that analog circuits do really well yeah. this this 16k boost just to bring that that air to everything and he's like oh put that on everything and then so it's, what, what channel is that we're looking at there so so that's my lead vocal bus right so all my vocal tracks so i've got like little delays and a bit of reverb effects mm -hmm. and then the, the verse and chorus um tracks so that's all going through this but you're not pushing even though you're pushing 16k you're only pushing one or two oh yeah, or 2. It's like 4, two, then... two and a half sort of db i mean it's not yeah it's no. not massive i wouldn't i wouldn't well. no. <laughs> because i would i would do stuff gradually as well i would put a bit when i print it i, I would put a bit on on there and you know, just just little by little, sort of building to the sound that I want. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's about two and a half, and then like about one dB at one sixty hertz. Um, just to give the the bottom just, end a just, bit more. Yeah, just a bit more body. So the so that was the first one, the first section. I was like, oh, this is really cool. And then when you sort of go down to the sort of compressor saturation section, I that's really interesting because I use saturation a lot in all my mixes um i've got like power not only in this but i've got parallel buses and so i use parallel compression and distortion a lot mm -hmm. and 
that's why I also love the fusion because there's a drive section on it. But so that saturation, I was like, oh, this is really nice to have that in in a like have have a channel where you've got everything you want. You've got EQ saturation and compression, and so so I've just like played around with it. And again, you see, there's there's not that much you know of it going on because obviously it can get it's not the type of track where you would have a very gritty s- gritty sound yeah. exactly it would it, it's sort of light just to slightly push the vocals up front a bit more mm-hmm. but without sounding distort distorted like sort of analog distortion or because that's not really the vibe of the track and and the, the compressor as well you see it's not doing we, we can play a bit and you can see how much it's doing <laughs> I, I find that, that that amount is enough for me. And of course, the good thing, the cool thing is to get technical for a minute, because the way the APB is um, calibrated, you're never going to get bad distortion out. You're never going to get oh, digital no, distortion you, you out. Get you're only going to get no, no. lovely, warm, saturated, oozy goodness. Yeah. And I think if if you're sort of going in really too, too loud in it, it's not going to distort. It's not going to digitally distort, but... Maybe you sort of think, oh, maybe that's getting into the plugin a bit hard. Then just turn it down a bit. Mm. But yeah, I, I've never really had that. Uh, but you're using that much. you're using Muex, the Muex mixer channel as a channel in its own right. You're yes. not using it as part of the mixer frame. No, no, no. I, I did use that. Um, so the one example that I would use that for is if I've got like a string section, for example, mm-hmm. I would maybe. Um, send that through the ch- the channels, do little EQ and stuff on it, and then bring the the console um, on maybe like an aux return mm-hmm. where everything is all the the strings tracks are going through, and then and then use because the com- the compression on that console as well, the the sum of all of it is is really nice too. Mm. So I think it's it's a really um, it's a really great way as well that you can use that. And and then I would just print the final stereo, and I've got a stereo string yep. bounce. It's funny you've said you've said strings as well. I've used it on drums and gone. You know, it works yeah, really or, well on analog instruments. Yeah. things that have got. Yeah. I think things that have got air in them, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, well, it's great on drums. Great for strings. Mm. Could be like on BVs. It could be on on so many things that that you can. Sometimes it's, strings, for example, is something that I can print as a stereo. And just leave it as that. Mm-hmm. On drums is a bit tricky because sometimes pe- maybe people want tweaks. Mm-hmm. So if yep. it's printed just as a stereo one, it's it's going to be hard to sort of okay. I have to sort of step back, yes, undo yeah. what I did, and then re- do the tweaks and then d- put that again. So maybe for me it doesn't um, necessarily work that way. But on on like BV parts or strings that I know they're usually you know well balanced and there's not going to be that much tweaks within the parts it mm-hmm. would be more like strings up or down yeah or bb's up or down um so that works well for that we can gain it slightly down to, to sort of have not such a jump but you can you can definitely hear the that open sort of like top end and you know the slightly brought forward as well you, you can definitely hear what that does yeah, I loved and lost before, but I never learned my lesson. Cause I hold on to the past like it's a fucking prize possession. I mean, for me, that sounds like a record. Yeah, it when jumps you, forward, when doesn't you it? sort of put it on, it's just like that That works so well, I think. Uh, let me just like tweak stuff a bit while we play a bit so we can. Me anymore, and I got questions. Yeah, I loved and lost before, but I never learned my lesson. Cause I hold on to the past like it's a fucking prize possession. 
and miss you the most But you're just the latest ghost in my collection When you push the, the low frequency, mm -hmm. it's almost like the vocal just expands, isn't mm -hmm. it? It, it? It's not doing a... It's a very, very broad... Um, yeah shelf scoop cube mm -hmm. thing yeah, yeah that's the one cube um but it's just bringing everything forward isn't it it's almost like it's been tweaked just to find mm. the right obviously you can find the right frequency but it, you've mm. just pushed the vocal forward it's lovely it's it's really it's really nice and i think just usually on the top end it's i usually put either around two three maybe four depending on what it is and yeah on on that yeah between one and two I would maybe use it on bass and it would, wouldn't be the same frequencies. Mm -hmm. Maybe I would put it on, you can go like to, down to 40 hertz, uh, like 40, 50 is a really nice little boost as well on that. So, yeah, let me just play a bit. Listening, cause I hold on to the past like it's a fucking prize possession, miss you the most. But you're just the latest ghost in my collection. I mean, I could have gone away with a bit more compression, to, to be fair. I mean, it doesn't sound... It's still, you, you still push it a bit more and it's, it still sounds great. And I got questions Yeah, I loved and lost before But I never learned my lesson Cos I hold on to the past Like it's a fucking prize Possession, miss you the most but you're just the latest ghost in my collection. Um, there's another uh, reason why I don't push it too much as well is because I've got little delays and reverb as well. So if I push compression a bit too much, that, that sort of brings yes, that up yeah. a lot. Um, it's, it, but it's it's subtle. But I, I, I think that's what APB does really well. You can drive it really hard, mm. but sometimes with just plugins rather than... Yeah. APB plugins, mm. when you apply them, you've got to push them hard before you even hear them. Sure, yeah. Whereas I think with APB, that little, tiny little mm. amount, you go, ah, there it is. That's, yeah. It's, it's that little sweetening on top. And you find the, the, the way it responds really feels like you're actually turning, turning something. It really responds like, it doesn't respond like a plugin. It really it respond responds like, like analog hardware. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really, it's really um, clever. When when I when I got it and I was like oh I was using that a lot and I didn't really sort of get into the other plugins I was like this is great I'm this is already improving my mixes this is already bringing to to another to to what I wanted to sound like and and I was like I didn't even get into the other bits yet and then I got into the limiter and I was like oh okay so another little increment of things mm -hmm. and yeah it's. It's great, and and there's there's a lot of obviously you if you're running them live you sort of restrict it to how you know how many APB you've got. But I find that if I put four running live, then then that's more than enough for me, and um and then print the ones that I can print, mm -hmm. and and you actually essentially using a lot more than a lot more than four because you know you can print as many as you want. Yeah, totally. On my instrument bus, what, what I'm trying to do most of the time is create space in the middle for the vocal. Mm -hmm. So I use... Do you, sorry, do you mean spatially left to right for the vocal or do you mean sonically in the frequency in the both. frequency domain? Right. Um, so, so in my instruments, I try to move them to more of the sides mm -hmm. when it's not like a, a part that needs to be in the middle, but if it's a guitar or something. But... And also frequency-wise to make space, um, which usually works um, quite well. And then I can put my vocals are usually sitting sitting nicely in, in there. So what I find is to do that is MS, uh, EQ. Yep. So I've, I've been sort of experimenting a bit with the raw Q, which has, <laughs> so good. Which so, has so an, good. an MS. So basically what I, what I like to do is... Um, well, I already sort of pan things sort of a bit out of the way. But then a good trick, which is also a, a sort of mastering trick that a lot of mastering engineers do on an overall mix, is to EQ the sides, mm -hmm. um, especially on, the, on sort of on the top end and then on the sort of high mids, to make the sides um, 
like slightly raised up in the, in a way so you still have the presence of of those elements mm-hmm. but they're not crowding your middle right um which i say raised up as in again slightly louder in level well there would there would be because if you if you raise like i'm 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 adding sort of like three three db and two sort of i mean that's at like 25k so it's yeah. really like airy uh, and, airy yeah. but then this one it was at 1.6 but that you can also like move it's like maybe like three or four mm-hmm. where the presence of those keys are which are also the sort of presence of the vocal so by having those on the side that sort of brings them a bit more forward um and without without you know interfering too much with mm-hmm. with the vocals and i think that's what ms is really really good for the fact that without having to dive back into the mix you can say right i want my the, the the further out part of the field part, part of the image mm-hmm. to be a little bit brighter or a yes. little bit more zingy a bit more yeah. airy and say this is perfect for that yeah that that really that really works and you can you could hear it when um at about 400 which is like sort of a body to it but again that's a bit in the vocal area so mm-hmm. that's nice to, to keep that um out of the way as well i mean this is just i might bring that up slightly as well to maybe sort of like a hundred just again i mean you can hear definitely hear the difference but it's um it's just little little like s- s- subtly bringing those to a bit more a bit more life in, into those mm-hmm. parts and i think if we listen in context of the whole mix as well you you'll hear what that does And Again, it's subtle, it's subtle, it's gentle, but it's definitely doing, it's that, you know, it's the polish, it's the mm, last. Exactly. That's probably going to go on my master bus as well. <laughs> and and, you know, and just, why not? <laughs> you know, just to, just, just, just even for that 25k, mm-hmm. because that's also something that they would do at mastering. Maybe if the mix is bright enough, then they would just raise up sort of like the really sort of, af- even after 20k, they would just raise that up to just bring air to it and then. Even if it's argue, we argue that we can't hear after that, whatever. But we def, I think we definitely can, in in the 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 feeling of it and in the, because airiness you can you know even if it's past twenty k you can definitely hear it. Mm. Well, the, the filter slopes and things like that. It definitely it will make its way down. De- yeah, exactly. Depending yeah, on, it would, depending it would on probably how start bad at sort your of hearing 18, is. Yeah. <laughs> it, would, it would probably start at eighteen and then sort of ramp up mm. to to the sort of higher frequencies, but. Um, so I think yeah I would I would definitely experiment on on my master bus with um not not in MS but in just in sort of regular regular stereo and I would I would try um because I tend I tend to um well with the with the L18 with the the collar then that brings uh top end up already but just you know you could add you could have like a bit of 60 hertz, you know, like a nice warm low end. And I think that would uh, like maybe a little bump at 10K. I think that that would that would really um, that would really work well on it. So I need to experiment a bit more with this. But, but I love the sound of it already. <laughs> mm, it is amazing. It's, it's just it's one of those, you know, I think I think I speak for everyone probably watching this who has a shopping list because we all do don't we of (laughs) of either the the vintage gear classic gear all the stuff we'd love but can't afford and can't practically Mm. use but i think this has got that kind of vintagey vibe about it Mm. but without all the vintage vibe hang-ups Manon, it's been an absolute pleasure. At this point, I've, that or that or whatever we're supposed to do. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us over. 
Um, My pleasure. And I... showing us your workflow. It's been insightful, I think is Great. exactly the right word. Thank Amazing. you so much. Thank you so much. So I really hope you enjoyed that. My name's James Ivy from McDSP and we will see you again very soon. You